Hello, welcome back to Introduction to Statistics. Before we move on, let's do a recap of the previous session. In the first session, we briefly touched upon presenting qualitative and quantitative data. And in the second session, we covered the four levels of measurement, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. And we listed the type of operations which can be performed for them. We explored mean, median, mode, range, and IQR. And in this session, we shall explore sampling, spread, variance, standard deviation, and distribution in a very simple way. So let us start with the terms population and sample. It is important to know the difference between these two terms because of the way in which observations are assigned to the data set. Population refers to the entire set of numbers, entire group of persons, entire group of objects in a data set. Basically, population refers to all elements in the data set, whereas a sample refers to one or more observations taken from the population. A sample is a portion of the population. There are different sampling methods of which four are most commonly used. Their usage depends on the type of data we are dealing with. In simple random sampling, each data point in the population has an equal chance of being included. In systemic random sampling, a random data point is picked as the starting point and every kth member of the population is picked to form the sample data set. In stratified random sampling, the population is divided into subgroups called strata and simple random sampling is applied. In cluster sampling, the population is divided into clusters and then clusters are randomly selected. Now let us move on to spread. In the English language, spread is just dispersion. Like for example, we spread butter on a slice of bread. When we spread butter, we evenly distribute it on the bread. In statistical language too, spread is the extent of distribution, the extent to which the distribution is stretched out over a wide range or squeezed into a narrow range or scattered within a range. There are synonyms for the term spread. Instead of the term spread, some people might use the term dispersion or scatter or variability to refer to spread. Variability is just how the variables are spread out, so these terms variability, spread, dispersion statistically have the same meaning. To statistically check the spread in data, we measure how far away the numbers in a data set are from the mean or median. These measurements are called measures of spread. We can calculate spread in different ways. The most common measures of spread are range, IQR, variance and standard deviation. We had covered range and IQR in the previous session, so now we shall explore variance and standard deviation. Since spread is the extent of distribution, we also need to define distribution. As a statistical function, a distribution shows all possible values for a variable and their frequency, meaning how often they occur. As a statistical method, a frequency distribution organizes a quantitative data set to show the shape of the data. There are different kinds of distribution, most common of which are probability distributions like normal distribution, binomial distribution, Poisson distribution. Note that we use the word probability here. So before we explore variance and standard deviation, let us find out what is probability. Put simply, probability is a value between 0 and 1 which gives the likelihood of an event occurring. 0 means no chance and 1 means 100% chance that the event will occur. The probability of an event occurring can depend on several possibilities. So there are rules to compute probability. Probability can be computed based on the fact that the events can be mutually exclusive. Meaning if event A occurs then event B cannot occur. Or events can be independent. Meaning the occurrence of event A does not affect the occurrence of event B. Or events may have joint probability, meaning if event A occurs, then it is likely that event B will also occur at the same time. Or events can have conditional probability, meaning event A occurs given that event B has already occurred. A probability distribution lists all outcomes of a study and shows us the probability associated with each outcome. The mean and the variance are used to summarize a probability distribution and compute the standard deviation. 
So let us first see how we can calculate the variance in standard deviation. Variance is a measure which tells us how far a set of values are from their average values. It basically shows us how much variation is present in the data and how far the set of values are spread out. Mathematically, variance is the average of the squared differences from the mean. To define formally statistically, variance is the expectation of the squared deviation of a random variable from its mean. There are two forms of variance, population variance and sample variance. Population variance is the measure of variance calculated from the population data. It tells us how data points are spread out in the given population. Sample variance is the measure of variance calculated from the sample data. It is an estimate of population variance and is generally used when it is difficult to compute the population variance. The mean is denoted either as mu or x bar. In some formulas, you will see mean is indicated by mu, but in some other formulas, you will see mean is indicated by x bar. Mu indicates the population mean and x bar indicates the sample mean. So when you see a formula with mu, it refers to the population mean. When you see an x bar, the formula deals with the sample mean. The formula to calculate the population variance sigma squared is as shown in the slide here. Here, mu is the mean of the dataset, xi are the data points in the dataset to the ith value, and n is the total number of items in the dataset. To calculate the population variance of a dataset, we follow the following steps. First, we find the mean of the dataset, then we subtract the mean from each data point or number or outcome in the dataset, then we square the resulting numbers, then we add all the resulting squared numbers, and finally we divide the result by the total number of items in the dataset. Let us calculate the population variance using an example. We shall use the same dataset as the previous session with the data points 2, 3, 3, 8, 20. First to find the mean, we add 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 8 plus 20 to get the total 36. Then we divide 36 by the total number of items in the data set, which is 5, to get the mean 7.2. So mu or the mean of the data set is 7.2. In the second step, we subtract the mean from each data point. Here 2, 3, 3, 8, 20 are the data points. So we subtract the mean 7.2 from 2 to get minus 5.2, from 3 to get minus 4.2, and again from 3 to get minus 4.2, from 8 to get 0 0.8, and from 20 to get 12.8. In the third step, we square each of the result which we got from step 2. We square the resulting numbers to make the negative numbers into positive numbers. The square of minus 5.2 gives us 27.04 of minus 4.2 gives 17.64 again of minus 4.2 gives 17.64 the square of 0 0.8 gives us 0 0.64 and finally the square of 12.8 gives us 163.84 in the fourth step we add all the resulting numbers from step 3 so we add 27.04 plus 17.64 plus 17.64 plus 0 0.64 plus 163.84 to get a total of 226.80. This step represents the summation part of the formula which indicates that this is the sum of all items in the data set. Finally, we divide the result 226.80 by n which is the total number of items in the data set to get 45.36. So 45.36 is the variance of our data set. Now that we got our variance, it is very easy to calculate the standard deviation. The population standard deviation is just the square root of the population variance. So the square root of 45.36 is 6.734, which is the standard deviation of our data set. The formula to find the sample variance and the population variance is nearly the same, except that to find the sample variance, we use n minus 1 instead of n in the formula and proceed with the same steps. 
In both formulas, n is the total number of observations. Just that n as in capital N is used for the population data set and n-1 with the small letter n refers to the total number of observations in the sample data set. Let's also note that since this is the sample data set, we use x bar to indicate the sample mean instead of mu which represents the population mean. Just like we calculate the population standard deviation from the square root of the population variance, we can calculate the sample standard deviation by getting the square root of the sample variance. In the next session, we shall cover standard deviation in more detail. Hope you liked the session. We covered basics of sampling, spread, distribution, probability, and we learned how to compute variance and standard deviation. In the next session, we shall continue to explore distributions. So stay tuned and stay safe. Thank you for your time.